as the third ship in the Oasis class, Harmony of the Seas, first launched in 2016. Since then, this class has been transformed with ships like Symphony of the Seas and Wonder of the Seas. So how does this seven-year-old ship compare to its sisters? Well, we've just returned from a seven-night Western Caribbean sailing on Harmony of the Seas and share all the details with you from what we liked, loved, and where Harmony of the Seas fell short in our exclusive cruise ship review up next. Welcome aboard, cruisers. I'm Don B from Eat Sleep Cruise, where we'll help you see the world one part at a time. And a special welcome back to our Eat Sleep Cruise subscribers. And we are back from our first cruise of 2023 with our completely honest review of Harmony of the Seas. Now, we're going to start with one aspect of our cruise that really impressed us, and that was the main dining room dining. If you're loyal to Royal Cruiser, then you probably already know that Royal Caribbean completely revamped its main dining room menu earlier this year. And actually, this was our first time testing out the new selections. And right off the bat, one thing we really liked about these new menus were that they were themed, with themes like a Taste of France or a Caribbean night, instead of just a hodgepodge of selections. Though many of the menu options were found on the previous version of the MDR menus, just rebucketed to different dates. A notable difference is that the previous classic section, which stayed the same every night, was removed. Still, many of those items, like a Caesar salad, did appear several times throughout the week. Likewise, items like fried chicken or the chicken parmesan could be substituted with grilled chicken available upon request. Yet, the removal of the classics, nightly steak, pasta, and salmon selections did limit the menu. On the flip side, there was the addition of new Indian-inspired dish each night, like the savory and tender aromatic chicken saga. While not huge fans of Indian cuisine on land, these new dishes did spice up the menu. Over the span of the week, I alternated between staples like the prime rib and the pork bao buns to new options like the jerk seasoned pork chop or the chicken marsala. Overall, we actually thought the food was much better than our two previous experiences we had in Royal Caribbean ships in 2022. Not to mention our wait staff of Roman and Today were amazing, adding to our overall enjoyment at the main dining room for dinner. Not only were we wowed by dinner in the main dining room, but our two dinners of specialty restaurants were also fantastic. Our meal at Wonderland on Harmony of the Seas was a two hour feast for the senses. And one of the best selections for starters were the liquid lobster, the Mad Hatter's purple potted shrimp, and the bird's nest. Given we were at table four, our waitress brought out five entrees. The short rib here never disappoints, but I was actually pleasantly surprised with the pork belly and the branzino as well. And to top it all off, the decadent The World Dessert was a perfect chocolatey way to end the evening. Our second specialty dining experience was at Jamie's Italian. While Royal Caribbean is phasing out the specialty restaurant, the dinner here was also delicious. The signature starters like the meat plank and the calamari were fresh and flavorful. Next, we all opted for a small portion of pasta as an entree. My bolognese was a hearty portion with al dente pasta and a rich marinara sauce, while my wife Heidi enjoyed her carbonara as well. Based on our waiter's suggestion, I went with the lamb chops for my entree, which were tender and juicy. Of course, the meal wouldn't be complete the lemon cheesecake and epic brownie. For those looking for other selections for specialty dining, Harmony of the Seas does feature sushi and hibachi at Izumi on deck four. Central Park also boasts Chops Grill, one of the best steakhouses at sea, as well as 150 Central Park, offering savory farm to table cuisine. When it came to enjoying the outdoor spaces on Harmony of the Seas, we are pretty surprised. Harmony of the Seas is home to three main pools, the beach pool, sports pool, and main pool comprised the Lido deck on deck 15. The main pool is open to all cruisers and hosted classics like the Sexiest Man competition. Across the way from the main pool is the beach pool. After these pools is a sports pool, which is also home to water volleyball and even dance classes. The family-friendly Splashway Bay is a water play area for younger children located nearby the sports pool. While there are several loungers surrounding each of these pools, they filled up pretty quickly on sea dates. But we were happy to see staff doing their best to limit chair hogs 
with new markers. Nonetheless, deck chairs on deck 16 overlooking the Lido deck were typically readily available regardless of the time of day. Given the age of the ship, the pool deck did feel like it could use some sprucing up, especially when compared to the updated Caribbean-inspired pool decks on other amplified Royal Caribbean ships. We did miss the lime and coconut bars here as well. One noticeable difference on Harmony Seas from other Oasis-class ships is the Solarium. Unfortunately, this adult-only space is home to several whirlpools and plenty of loungers, but no pool. Likewise, one thing we love about Royal Caribbean ships is that many onboard activities are included in the cruise fare. The same is true with Harmony of the Seas. While some of the amenities on Harmony of the Seas were innovative when the ship first launched, now they tend to be staples of any Royal Caribbean ship seven years later. Among the attractions include two lowrider surf simulators and dueling rock climbing walls. The ship is also home to a zip line, flying in nine decks above the boardwalk neighborhood a nine hole mini golf course and the ultimate abyss slide, which towers over 150 feet above sea level. Keeping up with the times, recently pickleball has become a new phenomenon on cruise ships. On Harmony Seas, there were daily open play hours on the sports court, and there always seemed to be a line of players with varying skill levels ready to play. Of course, on a ship of this size, there are plenty of other ways to stay active beyond the sports deck as well. There's a jogging track, which is located on deck five, which allows runners and walkers the ability to get some exercise away from the crowded pool deck, which is one feature I love. There's also a typical fitness center with various cardio and strength equipment to burn off some of those cruise calories. With the ship sailing near capacity, we're happy to report that both the pool deck and the sports deck handled the crowds quite well. While they were short lines and queues, they did move quickly. We're super happy to report that the service on Harmony of the Seas was phenomenal. The crew did a fantastic job keeping up with the requests of everyone on board. Now this is by far the busiest cruise we've been on since the restart, but service was still on point for this mega ship. Mr. Oliver and Giovanni at the Cafe Promenade kept us caffeinated throughout the day. These two quickly learned our drink order and greeted us with a smile. It felt like going into your neighborhood coffee shop back on land. At other bars and lounges, we never waited long for drinks. Whether ordering from the bar or at a table in a lounge, the venues were well staffed. Dinner in the main dining room was moderately paced, with most dinners lasting about 90 minutes. Our servers, Roman and Today, were outstanding. They were friendly and always ready to strike up a conversation. They were quick to get drink orders or to grab another dish for our table for to sample. Wait staff at both our specialty dinners were also very attentive. They kept us well fed and our drink glass is full. Unfortunately, Royal Caribbean has reduced service from most cabin categories to once daily. Darius, our stateroom attendant, made us feel right at home, fulfilling all of our requests and making sure our room was promptly tidied up. He even entertained us with various towel animals during the week. Royal Caribbean has revamped their main dining room menus and are in the process of actually updating their bar menus as well. However, there are no changes to the bar menus on our cruise. Although Royal Caribbean drink prices have increased by about a dollar from our last trip in 2022. Harmony of the Seas is home to the classic lineup of Royal Caribbean bars, and for the most part, the bars lived up to our expectations. There's the Cruise Line's signature martini bar, the Schooner Bar, home to Collins, cocktails, and classic libations, including our two favorite drinks in the Royal Caribbean fleet, Sidecar, and the Lavender Daiquiri. Daiquiris and mojitos were shaken up at the Latin-inspired Boleros. There's the English pub, the Boot and Bonnet, which offers properly made old fashions and several beers, although I really wish Royal Caribbean would update this beer menu to make it more expansive, similar to Norwegian Cruise Line's District Brewhouse. On the pool deck, Harmony of the Sea still features three distinct bars, the Sand Bar, Pool Bar, and Mass Bar on deck 16, instead of the newer lime and coconut bar menu and theming. Still, they did feature some of the standard bar menu with drinks like the pineapple guava sangria and the watermelon margarita. For something not found on many other RCI ships, there is Sabre. This venue features a well-balanced jalapeno cucumber margarita, which I enjoyed, especially during the Cinco de Mayo weekend. Other bars on Harmony of the Seas 
include Vintage's Wine Bar, the Trellis Bar in Central Park, the Rising Tide Bar, and the Bionic Bar. Cruisers on the Royal Caribbean Drink Package can even test out some experimental potions at the Wonderland Bar on Deck 12 with no reservations required. By now, we've stayed in plenty of staterooms on Royal Caribbean's mega ships, and for this Harmony of Seas cruise ship review, we stayed in an Ocean View Balcony Cabin, Stateroom 7622. This Category 2D stateroom was aft on Deck 7, starboard side. According to Royal Caribbean's website, the cabin was 182 square feet with a 50 square foot balcony. For us, this cabin was just the right size with adequate storage and space. With closets flanking the bed, we could unpack a week's worth of Caribbean attire and nighttime outfits without too much difficulty. Further, the desk and dresser offered enough shelves for my additional tech, along with space for Heidi to get ready. The bed was closer to the entrance of the stateroom, which is actually not our preferred layout. Still, this did not impact the overall functionality and flow of the stateroom. The sofa was located closer to the balcony where I was able to get some work done in the afternoons. The only drawback was the limited number of outlets in the cabin. There were three outlets and two USB outlets near the desk. We did miss having USB outlets near the bed for charging our phones at night as only one side had a power outlet. Additionally, our balcony offered plenty of space for the two chairs and small table. While the room showed slight signs of wear, it did feature the newer gray and blue color palette. Overall, the room was a comfortable and well-maintained home away from home for the week. While we loved the nighttime dining in both the main dining room and the specialty restaurants, one area where Harmony of the Seas really felt short for us were the casual dining options. It is true that there are several casual complimentary food options throughout the ship. On the Deck 6 Boardwalk, cruisers can enjoy hot dogs and sausages at the aptly named Boardwalk Doghouse Stand. On Deck 15 near the pool, there's the Mini Bites, which offers quick service Tex-Mex like tacos, quesadillas, and nachos. Think El Loco Fresh on other Royal Caribbean ships. Food is available 24 hours a day at the Cafe Promenade. This coffee shop serves small sandwiches, pastries, and sweets that rotate throughout the day but none of the selections were really all that appetizing. Across the way is Sorrento's Pizza. This venue is open until the early morning hours. If for some reason, the venue almost always has a line as the busy cooks try to keep up with the hungry cruisers, even though this pizza is barely one step above frozen pizza. The Park Cafe, located in Central Park on Deck 8, features a custom salad bar and the signature Royal Kumwiki sandwich for lunch along with a bagel bar and other small bites for breakfast. And while we enjoyed lunch, the breakfast sandwiches there were nowhere as good as we remember them being. And of course, there's the signature Royal Caribbean Windjammer Buffet, offering diverse breakfast, lunch, and dinner options. And we only dined there twice for lunch, and I was not impressed with any of the offerings. While there were plenty of options to choose from, none of them really wowed us. We still stand by our claim that the newer Carnival ships feature the best casual quick service spots, and this trip on Harmony of the Seas did nothing to sway that opinion. While the casual dining was a bit of a letdown, the onboard activities on Harmony of the Seas for the most part met our expectation. This seven night Western Caribbean itinerary included four ports of call and two full sea days. Like any Royal Caribbean mega ship, there were a variety of activities occurring morning, noon, and night. Throughout the day and early evening, there were plenty of trivia sessions. We rocked it out at the 90s in that tune session to win a coveted Royal Caribbean pen. Although we didn't fare as well in the standing room only Star Wars trivia. Rob, the activity staff, was a true fan as his questions were definitely unique. Throughout the week, there were other staples like dance classes, art auctions, arts and crafts, karaoke, and some upcharge sessions. On the pool decks, there were classics like the International Belly Flop Contest and sports competitions. Cruising is now officially back, like back back. For the first time 
on one of our recent Royal Caribbean cruises, Harmony of the Seas featured all the cruiser favorites. From game shows like Battle of the Sexes, The Crazy Quest, to the hush, silent disco party. There were promenade parties and even parades, as well as the midnight balloon drop. Each evening was full of plenty of fun and laughs. Likewise, there was a variety of live music around the ship. We were fond of Luca in the Boot and Bonnet pub playing classic acoustic music. Justin in the Schooner Bar was a lively piano player as well, mixing in humor and even some beatboxing for an entertaining time. There was also the house band, A Groove and Dazzles, and the Latin Heat and Boleros for those wanting to dance, along with several other musical acts that rotated throughout the ship. We always boast that Royal Caribbean has the best signature entertainment at sea. Their entertainment is diverse and high quality, combining unique entertainment spaces, Broadway collaborations, and unique productions. Although Harmony of the Seas has yet to update any of its signature entertainment in the past seven years, and when compared to its sister ships, the entertainment here isn't as powerful or mesmerizing. The signature I show, 1887, showcased a talented skating cast. There was also a second, more informal show, Ice Skate, with plenty of modern, upbeat music. Never a disappointment, the Aqua Theater's fine line diving show was a spectacle. On the last sea day, this venue was also home to Big Daddy's Hideaway Heist, which had a 1950s Polynesian theme alongside the high-flying feats of the athletic cast. Always a crowd pleaser, this version of the musical Grease had the crowd singing along to this classic musical. The second main theater show is the musical comedy Columbus. I applaud the cruise line's ambitious attempt to try something different with its production. Featuring modern pop music, it's a show that doesn't take itself too seriously as it recounts a tale of Marvin Columbus, a distant cousin to the famous Christopher. Other entertainment options include a headline singer and a comedy duo in the nightclub. While these shows were not the best entertainment in the Royal Caribbean fleet, they were still far better than your typical cruise show. In particular, we always loved the Aqua Theater shows, and these two on Harmony of the Seas were definitely worth watching. While it's not the newest ship in the Royal Caribbean fleet, this third Oasis class ship still offers plenty for cruisers of all ages. For the price, Harmony of the Seas did deliver on several fronts offering an Oasis class ship experience similar to our sisters. Now, if you want to know what it's like sailing on the newest Oasis class ship, Wonder of the Seas, don't worry, we have you covered. Right here on YouTube, we have our exclusive Wonder of the Seas cruise review. We also have a Wonder of the Seas ship tour. Yep, that's right. We go deck by deck, exploring every public venue on the world's largest cruise ship, Wonder of the Seas. From the restaurants, to entertainment spaces, the outdoor pool decks, and more, our One of the Seas ship tour showcases everything you need to know about that ship to help you decide if that Royal Caribbean megaship is right for your next cruise vacation.